my name is Farah Al Qasimi. I am currently in my studio in Bushwick um, on a very cold day in January. <laughs> my show at Cooper Cole in Toronto, Lady Lady, came from this one image of a friend of mine who's kind of watching an anime on her phone, and it's this really popular anime that was translated into Arabic in the late 80s. And it's this story about a little girl who's half Japanese, half English, who goes to live with her father, who's like a baron in a castle. And so it's this super interesting story about uh, this little girl learning how to navigate different cultures. But it was very interesting to me that that was one of few cartoons we had that was translated into Arabic that was available for kids to watch. And so my friend and I were revisiting this anime and watching it on her phone and it sort of felt like this key to understanding the rest of the photographs that I had been making, which are very much about people needing to traverse multiple cultures at once, you know. There are a couple of different vinyl wallpapers. One of them is inside a shopping center where a lot of us would go in the 90s to buy our, you know, pirated animes or like blockbuster movies on VHS that came out like, you know, years and years after the original release date. And then the other one is a photograph of a sunset in Ras al Khaimah, which is the emirate where my father's family is from. And, um, and the photographs around, I think, kind of deal with a general anxiety around being a young person who is very much influenced by different aspects of culture that are very much reflecting of these sort of like greater shifts in foreign policy and trade for sure. I think one of the themes in the show is this idea of cultural mirroring and cultural imitation. I'm constantly thinking about culture as monolithic, right? There are like certain aspects of culture that have made it across borders. And I was talking to a friend of mine recently about this, and we were talking about how Spongebob is such a ubiquitous cartoon. Like, so many cultures have Spongebob translated. <laughs> and so it, it is very interesting to see, like, what gets, what gains importance, you know, what messages are universal in these children's cartoons, which are essentially, like, they're designed to sort of build value systems, right? They're designed to be like, okay, stealing is bad. Um, you know, uh, being nice to your friends is good. Uh, the Emirates, I think, in the Gulf as a region, was a little bit late to making our own visual culture in terms of TV and uh, comic books and, you know, even, even art and certainly photography. So I think that there was a period of time where it really had to be borrowed from elsewhere. It influences the way that you experience time because things are constantly on a lag. One of the things I was thinking about was how clowns and comedians are often the saddest people because they are somehow understanding of the various extremes of life. And so they're able to really perform this alchemy of sadness that turns into something that is hopefully hilarious and tragic and um, transcendent. And so I found that kind of effective way of really just reducing the ideas in the show to this one drawn out sequence where you really have to decide what you believe and what you don't.